So really we're gonna do the exact same thing, but instead of using sample means, we're gonna do sample proportions. So here's our example. There's a Reese's Pieces candy machine at Kroger that kids love to get candy from. Reese's Pieces are chocolate candies that come in three different colors, brown, yellow, or orange. 45% of the candies in the machine are yellow, 35% are orange, and 20% are brown. If the population is all the candies in the machine, create a graph to display the population distribution. This is categorical because we're, just, we're listing out the three different colors and how often they occur. So remember we distribute categorical data with bar graphs. So I'll make a bar graph to display this population distribution. Like they told us in the problem, 45% of the candies are yellow, 35 are orange and 20 are brown. So I've labeled my axes showing the relative frequency or the percentage on the left side and my candy color is on the horizontal axis. Orange goes up to 35% because 35% are orange, yellow 45 and brown 20%. So this is the entire population, all the candy in the machine. Um, using the candy machine simulator, I'll show you what that is in a second. Take a random sample of 25 candies and record the proportion of orange candies. Create a graph to display the distribution of a sample. So since I don't actually have a candy machine here that I'm gonna take a sample from, I have a simulator online that I'm gonna open up and we'll take a sample and record the information from the sample. Here is the candy machine simulator that I was talking about. So over here, it tells you about the population. It has 35% of the candies are orange. And then I'm gonna take one sample and I want the sample size to be 25. So that's what that 25 is. And the number of samples I'm gonna take is one. So I'm gonna draw one sample here and it's gonna spin and it's gonna count how many are orange. So you'll see in a second. There we go. And so you can see, I got a sample of 25 candies where 28% are orange. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the 25 are orange. And so I'm gonna jump back to the notes and write this information down. Here's the information that I had from the simulator. The sample statistic in this case was P hat, the proportion of orange. There were seven out of 25. So 28% of my sample were orange candies. Now I didn't mention this before, but I counted 10 of them were yellow and eight of them were red, or I'm sorry, were brown. So now they want me to create a graph to display the distribution of the sample. So this is the information I have and I'm gonna distribute it. I'm gonna make again a bar graph because it's categorical showing the proportion 28 for orange and the, the proportions for the yellow and brown as well. Here I have shown the distribution of a sample, the one sample that I simulated where we had 28% orange, 40% were yellow and 30%, 32% were brown. So it looks similar to the population distribution, but in this case, um, there's a lot fewer candies, right? I only had 25 total. So if I wanted to, I could have shown, instead of doing relative frequency, I could have shown the count or the frequency here instead of doing 28%, it would be seven, and this was 10, and this would be eight. So it, it depends on what they're asking you to show, but either way is correct. Uh, so again, this is the distribution of a sample. This is the distribution of the population. Next, we're going to look at the sampling distribution. So you have to remember a sampling distribution is when we take all possible samples of the same size and distribute a statistic from them. So in this case, what we're gonna do, and I'll do this in the simulator, is I'm going to simulate taking all possible samples from the population, which in the previous population, there were only four individuals in the population. Now you gotta think about this candy machine. How many candies are in this machine? I mean, there's thousands. So really that's almost an infinite amount of samples of size 25 I could take. So in reality, I'm not gonna be able to take all possible samples, but we'll see what the shape of the distribution starts to look like as I take more and more and more samples. Now we're back to the simulator. 
And you remember, I took one sample already where it simulated and it plotted the proportion that was recorded from the first sample. So I'll draw one more sample to show you this process. It's gonna calculate how many orange candies there are in this second sample. There were actually 36% instead of 28% orange. And you can see it plotted at 0.36. Let's do another one. So right now I'm recording the statistics from all the samples. And you can see that the, the samples don't always end up being the same um, proportion of orange because of chance variation. And uh, that's, that's what we call sampling variability. No two samples, well, two samples could give the exact same thing, but samples are going to vary. They're not always gonna give us the exact same statistic. So if I were to keep doing this and I kept plotting the sample statistic or the proportion of orange, then I'm going to get what's called the sampling distribution. Because I'm going to take and plot the proportion of orange from each one. So instead of taking one sample, now let's take let's take 100 and it, it'll plot 100 instead of doing it each at a time. And let's see what it starts to look like. Draw samples. Here we go. So now I've got 100 samples here. And these are simulated samples coming from a candy machine where the probability is 0.35 of getting an orange candy. So 35% of these candies are orange. This is what the distribution of 100 samples would look like. Let's take 100 more and see what that looks like. So you can see it's starting to look roughly symmetric and it's centered at, it looks like it's centered at the mean would be somewhere right in here. Actually, I can calculate what the summary statistics are. The mean of this distribution is 0.36. So you can see the mean of the sampling distribution, if I were to continue taking samples over and over and over again, it's going to be equal to the population proportion, which we'll talk about that more in uh, the, the next or, the, or future videos. Right now, what I want you to understand is the sampling distribution this dot right here represents a sample of 25 candies that was taken where uh, 66, of the, 66 of the candies were orange or 66% of the candies were orange. So let's jump back to the notes and we'll talk about um, some more details about the sampling distribution. Now that we've simulated a sampling distribution from the candy machine, in your own words, explain what a sampling distribution of p hat is in the context of this problem. So what this means is if we took all possible samples of the same size, 25, and plotted the proportion of orange candies from each sample, then we would have the sampling distribution of p hat. And I'll draw a picture here to help illustrate what that means. Again, the sampling distribution is if we took all possible samples of size 25 and plotted the proportion of orange candies from each sample. For example, I took one sample, I got a p hat of 0.28. So down on my graph, I would put a p hat above 0.28, which would be about right here. p hat or a dot. Then if I took another sample and I measured and I got a proportion of 0.4, then I would put a p hat above or a dot above 0.4. And I were to keep repeating this process over and over and over again, as you saw in the simulation, the distribution will start to look like this. If I keep repeating the process over and over again, you'll see it will start to look approximately normal, centered at the mean or centered at the population parameter, which in this case, the population parameter was 0.35, 35% of the candies were orange. So this is just a reminder of sampling variability. It refers to the fact that different random samples of the same size produce different values for a statistic. Sometimes we got a proportion of 15% were orange. Sometimes we got a proportion of 55% or orange candies. So quick reminder, the first, pop, the first drawing up here was the population distribution. Next was 
the distribution of a sample. And finally, this would be the start of the, distribu of the sampling distribution of p hat. Now, technically, this is not the sampling distribution of p hat for this problem because it requires us to take all possible samples. And we didn't take all possible samples from the candy machine. There are too many samples for us to take to actually draw out the sampling distribution. So by definition, this isn't technically a sampling distribution here. But let's take a look at um, an example problem for how we will use simulated sampling distributions. <laughs> 